I'd like to tell you a little story uh, about what I'm trying to teach uh, my oldest son. Uh, see, I have a five-year-old, and then I also have uh, twins that are two years old. And uh, one of the things my five-year-old is doing is uh, he's jumping on the hassock and trying to jump onto the couch, and he's doing some things that a five-year-old would you know, typically do. But one thing we're noticing is that our uh, two-year-olds are trying to copy everything the five-year-old does. And uh, so some of the things a five-year-old does is really dangerous for a two-year-old to do. So we're trying to teach my five-year-old to not encourage his brothers to, to do things that are, uh, you know, maybe a little dangerous or even wrong. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a difficult challenge because we want our five-year-old to have fun, but we also want him to be responsible and to teach his brothers to do what is right and not to do what is wrong. You know, this last week in our Bible reading, we talked about Balaam. You know, and it's a very popular story in the Bible. It's a, one of the more um, stories that are, is a little bit stranger, if you would, in the Bible. See, here was this man who was a seer in the Old Testament. And uh, this man was called by Balak the king to come and curse the Israelites. Because he said to Balaam, we know that whoever you bless seems blessed. And whoever you curse is cursed. So they wanted to pay this man Balaam to come and curse the Israelites. Well, Balaam on his way to curse the Israelites, uh, his donkey, we know the story probably that his donkey actually tried to stop him. And he got so mad that he started beating his donkey. And his donkey actually turned around and spoke to him. He says, hey man, have I ever done this type of stuff before? And he's like, if I had a sword, I'd kill you. And you know, the story's just huge. But that's not really what I want to hit on today is the story of Balaam's donkey, which is what he's really known for. But I want to know, tell you the story about what happened when he tried to curse Israel. God didn't let him do it. God wouldn't let him curse him. He just kept blessing him over and over again. And uh, in that, he told the king, I can't do anything. God's for the Israelites. I can't curse him. But in Revelations, we see a different story of Balaam. We see a little bit deeper insight to the story. See, what happened was, is Balaam said, hey, you know, God's for them, I can't, sh I can't curse them. But what I can do is show you how to get them to sin. So he enticed them into idol worship and to sexual immorality. And what happened is the Moabite women came and deceived the Israelite men and they did sin and caused great devastation to the Israelites. And that's something that, you know, we as people, we need to understand that there was two things there was idol worship that Balaam uh, you know, manipulated the Israelites into, and then also sexual immorality. And you might be thinking, well, cool, I, I don't have to worry about the, um, I, you, know, you know, worshiping idols and stuff like that. But did you know that an idol is anything you put before God? It becomes an idol to you. And in your life, we've got to make sure that we uh, you know, do what's proper and not encourage people to put anything before God. If we're encouraging somebody to put anything in their life before God, we're encouraging them to sin like ba uh, Balaam sinned and encourage the Israelites to worship false gods, to put something before God. And he also encouraged them, of course, to uh, sin you know, with sexual immorality. And in our culture, man, we're so, um, you know, uh, we have so much struggles with sin in our uh, sexual sin in our culture that it's so easy to be enticed into that area. We need to make sure that we uh, also aren't encouraging others to do that by being modest or by encouraging them to have sexual purity. But you know, it's amazing to me though, the heart of this story is really about making sure that we you know, might not be thinking, hey, I didn't sin, I didn't do anything wrong, but did we entice others to do what was wrong? And that's what I'm trying to teach my son, is to encourage his brothers, his little brothers, to do what is right, not to encourage them to do what is wrong. And this has been the heart of devotion.